There we go. <laughs> Good evening and welcome back to the Celtic Way. I'm Tony Haggerty at a Haggerty 10 on the X and Twitter handle. And I'm joined by Ryan McGinley at the Ryan McGinley, who's just left Celtic Park. Two of us have been busy doing some work. You'll see it on the website. But as you can see from the strap line at the top, Celtic 5 Falk up to reaction. Celtic are into the semi-final where they drew Aberdeen. I will talk about that. But Kuninida finish off Falkirk as Hamden and Aberdeen away. They got there in the end, Ryan. The manager made eight changes. It showed for about an hour of that game, did it not? And then he had to yeah. buy the cavalry. And uh, the cavalry duly delivered. Kuhn, Engels coming on, Yang, and uh, they helped steady the ship, Greg Taylor, as well. So, yeah, they got there, but I think all the plaudits go to Falkirk, certainly for their first hour's performance. Just ran out of steam in Celtic's quality. That's what you expect them to do in the end up. We got Celtic scoreline right, Ryan. We did say they would score five. Didn't think that Falkirk would score two and let alone take the lead once, but twice and fair play to them. I have to say I was very impressed with John McGlynn's team. They really went about their business and they really made it actually an excellent cup tie. It was, not it been a great game for the neutral, if there was any neutrals watching the game. It was a, mm. a cracking game of football, made actually by Falkirk's insistence of playing the ball forward and making things happen. They gave Celtic a, a, an almighty fright, not once but twice, in the game. The first goal was a brilliant finish, um, although I thought that Alex Bailly got fouled in the lead-up to it. I know other people have different opinions, but if you pull somebody back and... Regardless of where they are in the football pitch, that's a foul. Is it not a professional foul? Um, so, yeah, there was I, that. I think the case could be argued for it, Ryan. Other people are saying he was pretty weak. But he was the mm. guy who out-muscled him and, and did grab him or, or had a some kind of hold on him, Ryan. So, seen them given, seen them not. But I'll ask you, it's, in most other areas of the pitch, it's a foul, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> that's mm -hmm. Yeah, that's exactly the exactly the point I was trying to make. Um, yeah, it, it took until those subs came on and Navrovsky came on at the end and it was good to see him, but four, the four subs that were made in that moment, they all made an impact in the game yeah. and in a positive way. There was changes that had to be made, there was players that had to be brought off the pitch for their own good because they were... Um, they were not having good performances Not just Lewis Palmer And I know we'll probably get on to speak about him um, He wasn't the only bad performer today That is for sure I'd probably look at the other winger as well Who was just as bad In my opinion Or maybe not He didn't have the ball as much But it was a poor day at the office for James Forrest too um, But the four players that came on Nicholas Kuhn Arnett Engels uh, Yang. Yang And um, and Greg Taylor. Uh, I think Greg Taylor's role will get lost in all of that because of Nicholas Cooden's incredible half hour. But I thought mm. I thought he was absolutely sublime when he came onto the pitch, Greg Taylor today. Yeah. He understood his role. There was a point in the game where he started and nearly finished a move because he'd, he'd went and he'd went central, he'd passed it out to somebody, and then all of a sudden he was making his way into the box. It was a really, really good performance from him. I think there's only one place we need to talk about, to be honest, in terms of a positive for Celtic, and that was Nicholas Kuhn. Two goals and two assists in half an hour of football. Man of the he, match. Without a shadow of a doubt, you know, I, I thought he was man of the match, even with the, the two assists. But to get the two goals as well, and I know that Falkirk were tiring, and I think he did see that towards the end of the game. I would, I would have said it would have been the same scoreline if it was two each. Going yeah. into extra time, I think Celtic would have scored more um, if it went to extra time. But Nicholas Kuhn, what a performance. What a start to the season he's had. And I think like he's goals. underlined that point. Five goals, six assists, 11 goal contributions in eight games. Can't ask We're in September, that. Tony. <laughs> we can't ask any more than that. So, yeah, correct. Uh, and he's kept true to his word when he said he had his dental problems and the weight loss problems. But he would get better. My goodness, he's got better. And he was excellent. And, you know, if I'm Lewis Palmer, I'd just be watching that and saying, that's how you impact a game when you're given a chance to come on and do it. For, I mean, one of the first things he does is square that ball across for either for a tap-in for two each. 
that that's that's the goal that gets you back into the game. Falkirk takes centre and within two passes he's won the ball back and gave it to Adam Eder to score the third. And after that you've won the match. I mean it's just it's it's an incredible appetite and just really chuffed for Kuhn because he you know he like everything else, Dyson Maida gets a lot of credit, doesn't he? And he's he's an excellent winger, but Kuhn this season, from pre season onwards, has been absolutely electrifying. And you're all waiting for it to kind of t- taper off. But it just shows no sign of it, Ryan. He's going to keep off, you know, and uh, I I was really happy that he came on and it was him that turned the game. It was crying out for him, you know, get some delivery because they were getting the ball wide enough to the to the wide men. He just didn't do anything with it. I I, I agree wholeheartedly with Forrest just wasn't one of Forrest's better games, was it? But Lewis Palmer got to discuss that as much as we are praising Nicholas Coon, but We'll start, as you say, we'll go with a positive. I, I just love what Nicholas Coon's bringing to the party right now and long may it continue. I think we're seeing the real Nicholas Coon now because the version that we've seen at the start of his Celtic career clearly wasn't the player that Celtic were trying to sign. I remember that game in particular against Hibs where he really, really struggled to make anything happen. He wasn't the only player that night that struggled. That was the game in which Adam Eda scored the two decisive penalties that really did swing the momentum back in Celtic's direction in the title race, but it, it was a bad performance from him in the night. But it seems like since then, since something's clicked with him this season, this pre-season, because I remember he had that wonderful yeah. game against Manchester City. Yep. Then he had the injuries, and I think mm. people were worried that right, he might lose all his momentum, but that wasn't the case. In fact, you look at the impact that he's had in games, it's, it's more, you need to talk about the games that he's not had an impact in, because Maybe that's only been like one or two games at most. And even then, he should have got an assist against Rangers with that chance that Kyogo scored. So that's another number that could have been on on these statistics. It's just been a a great start to the season for a player that looks really confident. He looks physically bulky as well. He's put on a bit of weight. He's needed to because he lost those nine kilos. And yeah, he's he's the standout winger we've got at the moment. He showed it in flashes last season, Ryan, but everybody remembered him for that Easter Road performance, didn't they? And they used it as a stick to beat him with. And uh, I think he certainly laid that one to rest, hasn't he? Uh, by his, his you know, blistering start to this season. And he seems to be enjoying his football. And Brendan Rodgers is praising him to the help, seeing he's starting to show it consistently. And that's what you need from your wingers. You need consistency in performance. And Nicholas Coon has been a role model of consistency since the first whistle blew at the start of this season. And as I say, he, he stepped up to the plate today when his team needed him most. And within a two-minute burst, he has helped Celtic win that football match. And then yeah. he's the goal to make it 4-2 is just a brilliant finish. That's just... Because you've got a lot of time there. Lots of people, you know, a lot. you've got a lot of options what to do. I think the manager spoke about it. So you could take it around the goalkeeper, you could dink him, you know, you you, you know, you could uh, do whatever because you've got the whole of the, <laughs> you've got the whole of Parkhead to run into. And sometimes the goal narrows, other times people just take it in a stride. But he finished it with great aplomb and then his low run into the corner was hot with a bit of a bit of venom, ferocious pace and took it away for the goalkeeper. So yeah, um Kuhn can keep doing that. All, all season, I'm, I'm loving what I'm seeing, and, and I'm delighted for him because he, I think he was at pains to tell everybody how badly losing the loss of the weight affected them. And I think people were just, well, I don't say they didn't believe him, but they were kind of like, right, okay, you know. But it has made a big difference, and it did make a big difference to his contribution. And I'm glad he's sure he's finally able to show what he can do. Yeah, I, I love both goals. To be honest, that he scored not just not just the assists, and both assists were great. Especially the second one for me because he wins the ball back. Um, yeah. it's it's great pressing from him. That's a real feature of his game recently, and I think he's learning from Dyson Maeda on how to press. His numbers are really good in that regard too. Um, yeah, I, I thought he, he was just absolutely brought that first goal. I just absolutely love that. It's a great pass from Engels. It's so so perfectly weighted. He's he's asking for it. And he's one on one with the goalkeeper. 
I don't know if he scores that goal last season, Tony. He does this season. I don't think there was any doubt that he was going to score that goal at that point. Um, well, you mentioned a word there, doubt. You would have doubted him running through and scoring last season, wouldn't you? Mm-hmm. You've no doubt this yeah. season, if he's running through on goal, he's That was confidence, that. though. It was confidence, yeah. though, that he put that away. Um, and, and he deserved that because he had the two assists. And, you know, you might be giving the man of the match award to Adam Eder because he got the two goals. But the two the two, the two goals of, uh, of, of Nicholas Kuhn's performance really did take that away. And when he was announced as being the player of the match, or man of the match, whatever you want to call it, there was a massive ovation in the crowd because people understood how big... Uh, yeah. Uh, a, a, not a cameo, I don't want to call it a cameo the, His performance was in getting Celtic to the next round To the semi-finals of the League Cup They don't get to the next round of the, the League Cup Without Nicholas Kuhn today They don't But what did you notice when Nicholas Kuhn came on? Adam Eder came alive mm-hmm. Because the ball the service was there And the, the link-up was there And Adam Eder was a different player in the last half an hour as well Because he spent the first half an hour just chasing shadows and looking you know, pedestrian, for want of a better word, but he exploded into life, and Adam Eder can play, you know, but he needs, he needs people around him that he can link up with, and you know, he linked up with James Forrest the other night when he came on and made an impact, the two of them made an impact, but he just exploded, he's in the right place at the right time, he never got one ball like that today, when Palma and Forrest were on the pitch, and you might have expected it because you were playing Falkirk, but as I say, you have to give a lot of credit to Falkirk for the way they played. But my my top performers today were Kuhn, Ida, the last half an hour, and Bernardo. I thought Bernardo, Bernardo was it. especially, and yeah. And let's talk about Bernardo's equaliser. Woof. Woof. Power, power in the glory. Scream air. He doesn't scream really air. do what happens, does he? <laughs> <laughs> but what I liked about it, and we'll talk about Alex Faye. I loved Alex Faye's setup for it. Great. The header. Great chip in from Hatati and the, just the cleverness and the awareness and the intelligence. And for all people will say that Vai was poor and he was poor. He, he wasn't great, but you can see some nuggets there, mm-hmm. you know, and that was one of them when he got forward. And that's a that's a brilliant headed layoff. He's not he's not just heading that into an area, he's, he's glanced and he saw him and he's head and he's headed the ball to him and saying have a pop at that, and Bernardo has duly obliged. That's his first goal since signing a permanent contract. I think it's called a rasper, Ryan. A dullion. Dig it out, as they say in Glasgow parlance. But, uh, and everybody thought normal service was going to be resumed after that, and Celtic would go on. But fair play to Falkirk, they came back. and They were targeting the likes of Vai down that left-hand side. There's no disputing that. And they were also targeting Susty through the middle as well, and Welsh. There's no disputing that. And they got a lot of joy from it, I thought. I thought they played good football. John McGlynn does play good football. And Rogers was talking about that before the game, and yeah. then he talked about it after the game in his numerous press conferences that he had, first with Premier Sports and then with the traditional media. And he didn't say anything that he wasn't saying before the game because he knew that this mm. was coming from Falkirk. They are the best side that Celtic have played thus far this season in terms of... And he's not saying that tongue-in-cheek because they played far more football than Rangers did when Rangers came to the Celtic Park. The the, mm-hmm. the football was expansive. It was exciting. Got to say, the, uh, the Falkirk fans are a credit to their team as well. What an incredible turnout. They're yeah. a team that need to be... Uh, and I, I don't have any... I don't have any allegiances other than with Celtic, but you're wanting a team like Falkirk in the Scottish Premiership because the crowds that they bring, um, you, you'd think that that would maybe be commonplace if they were they were to return to the, the, the top flight of Scottish football. They're a big team, they've got a great stadium, they've got a good manager, some decent individual players, especially their wingers, and you you, you get the, you get the feeling that they, they, they're going to have a good season if they play like that. If they play like they did today um, and they can replicate that in the Championship, then... I think they'll be right up there. I mean, they already are right up there, but they'll be challenging for promotion alongside Air United, for sure. I'm friendly with a group of Falkirk fans, Ryan, and they're a cracking squad of guys. We've been out with them many, many times. They're they're good boys, and they they will have enjoyed certain parts of today, but they'll be sick that they get beat because they hate that whole kind of plaudit stuff and not a result. Uh, but, But yeah, I think Rogers mentioned it as well, that 
he actually enjoyed analysing Falkirk. They gave him a bit of joy because of the way they play. Now the four three three and having a go, and he was asked, "Should more teams do that?" And he said, "Well, it's up to the individual teams." But he enjoyed watching John's team play because they just play a different style to maybe what Celtic are used to when teams come to Celtic Park. And uh, but I thought that was a lovely word that he used. It said he he had joy analysing their games before. But lots of people are saying that. Eight changes, Ryan. It was a lot, wasn't it? Three out of the back four changed. Yeah. So. Yep. They were enforced as well, though. Two, two of them were enforced. Johnson couldn't play because of an injection. And Carter Vickers is genuinely injured at the moment. Um, he faces a bit of a race against time to be fit for the St. Johnson and Borussia Dortmund games, but hopefully he'll be fine. Johnson will be fine for the next game. So two of them were enforced. You know, it's not as if. I mean, as much as they would probably would have liked to play Johnson and Carter Vickers, I don't think they would have played anyway, but they had to make those changes. And yeah, it's, it's just one of those ones. Like they're in the draw for the next round. Yeah. Or they're in the hat. They've, their name's been pulled out of the hat. And they know who they're playing against. In the, I mean, uh, what? Well, four that hadn't played together. You know, Ralph and they Dye, showed it. Justy and Wales. Of course they did. And... I, it's, it's too early to make any kind of sharp, try that again, snap judgments on value and trusty. But he did see that their ring rustiness was there. They hadn't played competitive football for a while. And it did show. At the end of the day, it's about getting the job done. And Celtic, that's why Celtic have got strength and depth. They brought on their strength and depth from the bench and got them through, you know, uh, because after an hour, you were thinking Celtic need an injection of something. You know, lots of people saying the manager kind of called it wrong by making eight changes. And he, he admitted that himself. He said that was on me. And he said that's the most he would ever do in a game. But it's usually one for every line, i.e. the back line, the midfield line or the forward line. So he did say that was on him. But they, they got out. They got, not so much got away with it. He brought on the quality. And then they were convincing the winners in the end, weren't they? You have to say that. That, that superior fitness told, all that kind of stuff. And when Kuhn, Yang, eh, Engels and Taylor came on, the pressing was just up. There was fluidity to it, wasn't there? Where he said before in the first hour there was a real disconnect. I don't think you can disagree with that. Yeah, there was there was, there was was disconnect. And that's to be expected when you're playing for players that have never played with each other. I know Ralston and Welsh have played before. But, you know, you've got Schmeichel as well, who's a new goalkeeper. And it's good to keep that continuity. But he's playing again. He's playing with new players for the first time as well. He'd never played really yeah. with Ralston. He'd never really played with Welsh. Definitely not Austin Trusting. Definitely not Alex Baye. So that's to be expected. And I'd much rather... Uh, but Brendan Rodgers said it did work out in the end because he got through. And that's the main thing. You know, it doesn't even matter about how many mm. goals he scored. It's all about getting into the next round. And that's what they did. But... This you know, podcast it, would have been a totally different one, Ryan. <laughs> oh, absolutely. It probably would have had more viewers as well at this moment in time if Celtic could be put out. Um, that's just the nature of the business and the nature of the beast. But yeah, I'm just delighted that that on switch was flicked on after about an hour when those players came on. Arna oh, Engels came on and made a, and made a big impact. When um, it was switched on, it was switched on though, wasn't it? Lots of comments yeah. coming in about various players, Ryan Palmer being the kind of... Francis Leicester, Palmer for me needs to take a good hard look at himself. He was extremely poor. Indeed. I wrote in my in, uh, instant analysis, poor show from Palmer. Queen was immense as Hazel Finn. Most certainly was Hazel, even to you. Mark McQueen, Palmer falls behind my Ida and Yang in the pecking order. Most certainly does. Alexander Beagle saying eight changes, too many today, but in we go, yep. He's always been in the hat for the semi-final, he's a fin saying you have to give credit to Falk at Greek football. It most certainly was, so I agree with that. Carl Ann Grant saying, evening to you and myself, Ryan. Evening, Carl Ann Grant, how are you? And Mark Thank McQueen you. saying, Perfect Palmer timing, I was Valley coughing as soon as you said and, that. <laughs> <laughs> and Mark McQueen saying, Palmer, Valley and Wales were terrible. Rebel double X, Bernardo was my man of the match, thought he was brilliant. I like Bernardo as well, I like what he brings. Dennis Jameson right. touch. It's no. touch. Falkirk gives a scare not once but twice, but thank goodness for the subs. Changed the game totally. That's what they're there for. 
Francis Leicester, another regular comment. How are you doing, Francis? Manager for me made a big error in starting defensive lineup to play four guys who never played with each other against a team who hadn't lost for a long time. I think he learnt his lesson there because he was blaming himself for that, saying that was on me, but they got their end results, all that's important. Yang was an upgrading Palmer, who would have thought it? <laughs> yeah, it was. Jackie Dillon, I agree with that. Yeah. Uh, and Mark McQueen saying he's disappointed that the players who got their chance today were really poor. That's what disappointed me most about today. I've got to be, I've got to be honest. Kevin Dunn, Brennan got changes wrong. He could have cost his whole back four. That's being at least very naive or to, totally disrespectful to Falkirk. I don't think Brennan would be disrespectful to Falkirk. But Adam Eda said that he felt that there was a wee bit of or a lack of respect shown to Falkirk. So if that was the case, then the Celtic need to nip that in the bud right away. And uh, do not disrespect any team or any opposition, especially one at Falkirk who have been on a roll. Which is a lot for Falkirk when that's the hardest game Celtic have had so far. The manager admitted that in 1888 CFC saying Rogers experimented and it backfired, but he rectified it and Celtic smashed it after that. They most certainly did. And Dennis making the point as well, Ryan, that Yang was good today when he came on. He was. Thought he looked bright, looked lively, and he cracked in a great shot that the keeper saved, didn't he? Yeah, I'll I'll reserve judgment on Yang oh, until he yeah, does yeah. it in more than two or three more than one or two games on the trot. If he can if he can keep up that consistency, doesn't there's, there's definitely a, a space for him in the squad. He's struggled to even make the bench yeah, yeah, a lot yeah. of times this season. But that's what you want to see from him. But we've seen this before because he'd had this performance yeah, yeah. against Aberdeen last season. I remember it. He was and Palmer was good in that game as well. It was Palmer and Yang on either wing, and they were both absolutely brilliant. They were making things happen. Um but it's all about consistency. Unfortunately, with wingers, you need to be consistent, otherwise mm-hmm. you won't stay long in the team. It's a it's a very up and down position, literally and figuratively. Mm-hmm. If you don't do it game on game and get to those levels then you won't have a spot in the squad yeah. or a spot in the team and that's the that's the problem unfortunately yeah. for players but I, but you've got to give credit where credit's due today I thought Yang was unlucky not to score he had a good chance that he hit right at the keeper and then another chance that he just narrowly hit over the bar wasn't it yeah, yeah it was one that he was quite unlucky with but I, I thought his overall contribution was good but the contribution of all four of those subs in the 60th minute yeah, was was solid yeah do Hallow LP saying Palmer was shocking today and he even made Valley look bad. And AR saying Palmer can get to somewhere. He's a waste of a jersey. Matt McQueen saying found himself shouting at the telly watching Celtic for the first time this season. <laughs> Mostly at Welsh and Palmer and Dennis reiterating what we were saying. Bernardo go get back in the game was brilliant. It certainly was. Rebel Double X saying Bernardo was brilliant. Hatati was anonymous. He was. And Scott on the Brave saying, even in the Celtic way, hoping the comment section isn't full of negativity. Celtic went above and beyond this season. They're allowed a poor 45 credit to fall cut here, here. That's not negative. We're just pointing out a few things, Scott on the Brave, but I agree with that. No, we're not negative. We're... And Francis Lester saying, Palmer's a glory hunter, not a team player. I've been banging that drum for a wee while now. And in his opinion, he doesn't have the minerals to back that self-belief up. Yeah, it's... Uh, I think if I'm worried if I'm Brendan Rodgers and I'm looking at Palmer, I'm just worried because I thought, again, I thought attitude was all wrong today. He should be busting a gut and couldn't show them within five minutes of coming on how you play that position. And uh, that's, I was reluctant to play Palmer in the first place. I know you thought you could make a difference, Ryan, but after and I'm not surprised he was hooked after that. I was actually surprised to see him start the second half I've got to be honest I thought he was that poor that he could have got hooked at half time mm. I, I thought he started the game okay and it feels weird saying that because you know yeah. what happened in the middle of the first half going to the end of the first half he didn't have a good performance but I think you've got to understand well not understand but remember that he was tracking back and making defensive tackles yes some of them were down to the fact that he gave the ball away and he had to track back to retrieve said ball but he was I don't I don't agree with the not trying or the, the glory hunting. I don't agree with that because he did genuinely try. I just think he was bad, that like he had a bad performance. I don't think it's down to a lack of interest because I could see that he was trying, but nothing came off for him whatsoever today. But he wasn't the only one and I, I don't want to single him out. 
um, because I feel like everybody else is doing that <laughs> at the moment for the player. And it's understandable because now the difference between Palmer and James Forrest today, and I know there's about 100 goals of a difference between Palmer and James Forrest. Forrest has done it for an extended period of time. When Palmer does things, and Hatati is sometimes guilty of this as well. It's very obvious. It's obvious that he's making mistakes because it's very public what he does when he gives the ball away. He's flashy. That's He catches the eye, and maybe not in a good way because he brings attention to himself what he's doing. Yeah. But he wasn't the only one that was doing that today. But the fact that it's Palmer, I think people will understand that and, and they'll look to that. I'm not trying to defend him. I'm just... Sounds like it. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not defending him because he didn't have a good performance today. I, when I, when I put out these ratings, he'll probably be a four out of ten, maybe even lower. But he won't be the only four or five out of ten today. I think there'll be quite a few. Even uh, you know, if the five goals don't mask. They don't mask over or gloss over um, the poor performance that was there for the majority of proceedings today. And yeah. It, it's just annoying because I wanted them. I wanted them to kick on today, and he didn't kick on. But I, I don't did. think it's for a, I don't think it's for a lack of trying. Unfortunately for him, I don't think he can hide behind that. I think it was just a, a poor, poor performance for him. I don't know what he's bringing to the team at the moment because yeah. he's predictable. Hey. He cuts in. Everybody knows that he's going to cut in. He's got no pace. There was a point where the ball was played in front of him, where Daisy Maeda would have got to it because he's faster than Palmer. You actually need to actually put it on in Palmer's feet for him to get it because he doesn't have any pace. He's a slow winger, which isn't a lot. It isn't helpful, especially if you're not that skillful either. So, he's no, he's no cross. He's no crossing ability either. But he doesn't seem to, he doesn't want to, want to beat his man and go down the line and try and get a crossover. And it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of touches to make up his mind to decide what he's actually going to do. Most of the time, he just cuts inside and it comes to nothing. It's the lack of end product for me. I think he's just a poor footballer, or he's he's having a a chronic dip in form. Some people have dips in form, but this dip in form is chronic. And any confidence or any ability that he showed with, with the long range goals and impact that he made, that just seems a long, long time ago, Ryan. Mm -hmm. To to be able to hold your own in this Brendan Rodgers team. Certain players that Brendan Rodgers said need to produce more. He needs to produce more than more. Well, what's more than more? I don't know what more than more is, but Palmer certainly needs to produce it because he ain't getting anywhere near that team on the basis of that evidence. And that's a team that are, are a, a league below you. Granted, they played very well, but you should be a standout or a stick out and shining on that platform when you're giving it today. And Palmer, and he wasn't alone. Palmer was not alone. And not taking his chance today, so uh, yeah. And as I say, it's a bit early for rash judgments on Valley and Trusty, but they were very ring rusty, and uh, could have been exposed, but were for kind of a couple of the go the two goals that we conceded. But again, it's the quality from the bench and the quality and strength and depth of your squad that's. Got you out of hole there. I want to say thank you to the four hundred over four hundred and fifty people that are joining us tonight. Hope you enjoyed the end of the last half an hour. We all enjoyed that, didn't we? And there was something I also like, Ryan. I loved he just touch away from the defender as he's bearing down and goal mm -hmm. to just give himself that wee yard. Takes a defender right out of the play and uh, and finishes it brilliantly because he's, he's he's on a high after the equaliser. So it'd be easy to. To panic and get excited, but he buried it, knowing full well that that's probably that that was the match winning goal because it helped Celtic go on and you know make it. I think the scoreline was a bit more emphatic than it than the game sounded or the the actual game that you watched. But they finished strongly, Celtic, and that's what I liked about them. Yeah, if if you're gonna finish strong, if you. <laughs> If you're going to save your goals, save them till the end rather than score at the start and then become yeah. it becomes a bit of a, a, a cricket match. You're better off putting an exclamation mark at the end of it, and they certainly did. You know, I don't think it was a five-two game. Definitely wasn't for those sixty minutes that were played. But I think the fitness levels, the superior fitness levels, came to play, and also yeah. the strength yeah. that Celtic could bring off the bench. You know, you're bringing you're bringing on a guy that you've just signed for eleven million pounds in Arnett Engels, who. 
he just well, did what I expect of him. He is just class. He's a good footballer, and that's yeah. what he does. I mean, he put it on a plate for Nicholas Kinn. That is a that is a winger's dream to have that ball, or a, a forward's dream to have that ball put right in front of him, and he can just bear down on goal, and then essentially decide what he wants to do when the goalkeeper decides what he's going to do in that moment. And and that was, you know, another goal contribution for Engels. He's he's con- contributing in every game that he's playing in thus far, which is great to see. Nicholas Kuhn with another two, whatever, another four goal contributions, two goals and two assists. So the, the people that Celtic brought off the bench, it's not as if they're subs. They, they're usually starters. So they're coming off the bench and showing why they're starters. It hurts the players that, that started the game because they realise that they'll probably be in the opposite position now. now. They'll be subs looking for some game time if they can even get that. It, it's just reinforced. And, and it was a day in which you wanted those players that, that were subs normally that were starting today that they, they had a, an opportunity to start the game and and prove that they could be starters in the team. If anything, it just reinforced the point that the subs, the players that normally start are the starters and they will be the starters. And that's the difference. Apart yeah. from Bernardo, I would say Bernardo's probably the only one that you would say that right, he probably deserves to be starting. The only reason he's not starting is because Arna Engels is that good, unfortunately for him. Jamie Brown. Palmer's annoying, he flatters to deceive. 14 14 official, just like, do you know how good Greg Taylor is? Well, we yep. mentioned Greg Taylor and he was excellent. And Palm Calm saying Hatati's a luxury player, Bernardo's a whole match player. Now uh, that's up open to interpretation. But I like what Bernardo brought today. Engels pass to Kuhn was whatever word for that is, Ryan, but probably sublime, excellent, superb. Marky, the manager doesn't make mistakes, Ryan. He makes learning opportunities. There you go. You agree with that? Yeah, yeah. They, <laughs> could probably, you could probably use that, to be honest. That's definitely something that Brendan Rodgers would probably say. <laughs> to, yeah. to absolve him of any blame in that regard. Um, I don't think he made mistakes. He took, he took a risk today and it didn't work. It did, or it, it didn't work for the 60 minutes. Yeah, he, he, brought felt, the players. he said he felt the risk was worth taking, but it was on him. There was a disconnect for the first hour. I like yeah. that. Accountability for our actions is good. Accountability yeah. is good from a manager. It shows that he's human. I like that. He's all fun since he thinks Brennan knows his biggest mistake was not to have my darkened on from the start. And Scott Dougal saying, let's not be too harsh on Valley as it's his first game of the season. Need game time, same as trusty. Well, that's what the manager wanted to expose them to the elements of game time, see what happens. You know. Snap judgments will always be made, but and rash judgments. But yeah, we'll see what they bring moving forward. Kuhn's making me forget about Jota. She, Rebel Double X, she never thought she'd say that. There you go. Eh? What can I say that? Well, if he keeps these numbers up for the rest of the season, yeah. he's going to have Scott Sinclair numbers at the end of the season. You would say you've got to you've got to make that comparison: goals and assists. Yeah, yeah. Dennis Jameson saying Palmer's not only had one bad day at the office. It's very true. Yeah. Fair enough. Adam Eden needs to start before Kyogo next week, says John Quinn. Try on Quinn. And mm-hmm. Buzzing Farida says AR. And Jason Lee, thank you, Jason. Appreciate it. Hit the like button, guys. Thanks very much. Appreciate that. And Paul McCallum comes back in saying, still Bernardo over Hitati for him. And uh, Hitati's a sulker, he says. But he's angry. He he very harsh. Very, very harsh, especially <laughs> after the fact that he had one of the be- he was one of the best players in the pitch on Wednesday. Yeah. We need, to, we need to, I, I'm going to call for it right now. I'm going to call for a bit of consistency in the way that Hatati spoke about. Yes, you can have some good games and bad games, but the reason why he continues to play is because he's talented and he's inconsistent. Yes, they're trying to. Rogers is trying to work with the with the the, consi- the consistency levels of Hatati, but just because he's had one bad game. It doesn't mean he's a sulker. He's got an attitude problem. He he has good games and bad games. That's the life of a of a Celtic midfielder. I think that's incredibly harsh, to be honest. Well, Colin Rogers is saying, sorry, Colin Rogers is saying Bernardo's competing for a real position. I think that's fair. Hey, Mister Freeland saying great finish by Paolo. No, I agree with what you're saying. I think Hattati's a sublimely talented player as well. It's, it's just. It's intriguing how this dynamic is going to play out this season to see who gets the kind of nod. But I thought Hatati was excellent the other night, so uh, I'm not decrying him for 
you know, been off it today. Put, they put a lot into the other night, you know. Bernardo in, Hitati out, he says Ernest mostly. There you go. And Jason Lee saying Maida's my, my, one of the best things Ange did for Celtic. And Paul McCallum saying, Dying feet up, smoking a fast cigar, and energy I take whiskey. Nothing to worry about. He's not losing his place. Mm. <laughs> I guess Dyson Dy- Dy- Maida might well be thinking that. And Sharon Quinn coming back in saying Bernardo Engels and Cal Max, the perfect midfield. I think that's a bit harsh on Hattati after the other night. I thought he was excellent on Wednesday. And Jason Lee saying that Hattati was excellent in the Champions League match. And Tam Max saying, not today though. Bad days at the office for some people, Ryan, yeah? Yep, I'm going to bring this up because this is exactly what I think. Yeah. He's huffy because his own performances are bad. Yeah. I, I gen- That's the reason why. That's why he gets annoyed with himself. Nothing wrong with that. No, there is a. It's the. It's just I. I, <laughs> Listen, I feel like saying the same thing over. I'm saying the same thing over and over again about Hattati, and he shows more often than not why he's such a good player for Celtic because he makes things happen. Look at yeah. that Bratislava game in particular. He was, he was yeah, tremendous. He was, he was yeah. absolutely instrumental in everything good about Celtic. Fatigue yeah. can happen as well to players. Got to remember, he does get his injuries and then. Uh, he's, he's, ca- he's playing catch up and then he's playing X amount of games there's a reason why Brendan Rodgers is continuing to play him one because he wants to hammer home the point to Atati that you've got to play in this certain style and, and two because he's a he, he's a quality footballer that can turn it on more often than not um, a, but, you know there's, there's now yeah. I'd probably want I'd probably want Bernardo playing at McDermott Park to be honest it's going to be a stuffy game I want somebody that's going to put an attackle so I'd have players a no are human Ryan. players are human that was a one almighty high Celtic were on on Wednesday night. And today there was a come down factor. I don't care what MD says. You know, and Adam Eder spoke about, you know, a, a lack of respect. And I don't don't believe that per se, but I just think there was a kind of right, it's Falkirk, and then all of a sudden it took an hour for a lot of people to say, Wow, we ran a game here. Or it took to half time and things were said. You know, I, I, I think Adam Eder was right in saying they were blown away a bit by how Falkirk played. They just weren't expecting Falkirk to be that good. And I think a lot of players maybe fell into that category today. Despite being told and drilled and said that they would do this, they would do that, I think a lot of them went, OK, OK. Not expecting it to be easy, but maybe expected it to be easier than it proved to be. And then you step on the afterburners after the hour mark and you win convincingly. So I think I think Falkirk caught a lot of players by surprise and certainly caught a lot of Celtic supporters by surprise. And that's credit to John McGlynn, the way he set his team up and the way his team have been playing. But you can understand why they went for 42 games or 38 games unbeaten in League 2, sorry, League 1, mm-hmm. and they're top, top of the Championship, having won 5 out of 5. So, you know, as Brendan Rodgers said, it was a joy analysing them, and I can understand that. You probably have seen a lot of good footage and good clips and watched some decent players. And Michael Stewart was at pains to point out that a lot of them are Scottish players as well, Ryan. So that were on show. So I think sometimes you've got to say opposition did well and applaud that. And I'm applauding yeah. that for giving Celtic a hard game. Alexander Beagie, thanks very much. Brilliant after match reaction. As always, lads, that's very kind. Appreciate that. Over 500 people joining us, Ryan. Sunday night, 10 to 8. Can he beat it? Brilliant, isn't it? Yes, the unmatched support. We really do appreciate it from everybody. Anybody that watches pre match, post match, maybe they might come and watch them after the game. They might even want to listen to the pre match after the game to hear what we were saying, what we were predicting, see if we got any <laughs> predictions right. I got a prediction right last week. Um, you did. I said that, I, that yeah. well, actually, I didn't get it right because I said they'd get 10 goals and they get 12. So I'm, I'm okay to be wrong in this situation. Um, you know, five goals in four days uh, or ten goals in four days is some going at home. You know, and to score two goals against Hearts was good as well. Obviously, they've lost their manager. But to get the win was the most important thing. But we did talk about that. We talked in, I think it was the the Friday. It would have been the Friday press conference video that we were saying that we want Celtic to be in a good position in free competitions by the time at the end of the at the end of the Falkirk game, and they are because they got the win against Hearts. Yes, it wasn't pretty. They had the great performance and win against Slovan Bratislava that puts them in a good place in the Champions League to begin with. And then, yes, it wasn't perfect, but they get five goals to Falkirk's two. 
in the, the League Cup and that's them through to the semi-final. Job done. Um, they've now got, I think it's six days until McDermott Park um, against the managerless St. Johnson. So we'll see how that goes. Incredible goals and aggression, says Fasty T. What do you think of the draw, Ryan? Aberdeen? Was it the one it's you the wanted to <laughs> yeah, it's the toughest. I'm not. I'm not even saying. I'm not even saying that with tongue in cheek. It is the toughest draw because look, yeah, they are joint top. They're, they're joint yeah. top of the of the Scottish Premiership at the moment. Jimmy uh, Talan's having a great start to his Aberdeen uh, managerial career. You wonder if Hearts will go down that road now as well. Maybe going for a left field appointment for uh, for Scottish football. It just goes to show you when you take a risk on a manager or do your research on a manager that's done well in a similar league like like Sweden is to Scotland. You know, the level won't be that much better between Sweden and Scotland, you wouldn't say. But Scotland's maybe a wee bit better, but Sweden, you know, the, the good players have came from there in the past. So it's going to be a difficult game. It's probably the team I wanted to avoid in the semi-finals, if I'm being honest with you. But uh, Rangers will get Motherwell. Um, if I want, if it was one of the four team, one of the three teams, it would probably be um, Motherwell that I would have wanted. But Aberdeen, it's going to be a cracking semi-final. Looking forward to sampling that with you, Tony, at Hampden Park, and it should be a a, a good rerun of the deja Scottish vu. Cup semi-final. Yeah, deja vu. As long as it doesn't go the same way, Ryan, in terms of uh, all the way. I want it done and dusted if they can by 90 minutes, but you've got a feeling it could go all the way, couldn't you? The way the two teams are playing could be another, mm. could be another uh, cracker. But yeah, listen, that as soon as you get to semi finals, I don't care who Celtic play. Uh, These games take care of themselves, don't Yeah, they? whoever came out of that bowl, I wasn't caring. <laughs> it's just like, you know, we will play who we play, and if you don't win the semi final, then you don't deserve to win the trophy anyway. So, you know, but it's uh, I was I'm confident I was confident of beating all all three. You can't play all three, but any of the three of them, and I'm still confident of because I think we'll all improve by then. Because it's, it's it's in November, isn't it? And I think mm-hmm. the finals in December the fifteenth. But I think Celtic will have improved by November, and they'll they'll be even more uh, hitting the gears. And uh, up in their levels, so yeah, I we will deal with that when it comes. In terms of the job, it was the toughest Celtic could have got, but sometimes that works out better in, in your favour. So, and same. who knows what form Aberdeen will be in by the time yeah. November comes because they'll have faced, I think they'll, they'll have faced both Celtic and Rangers before Correct. then. So, we'll, we'll have a we'll have a better gauge of a what they're all about. Yeah, yeah a clearer That's indication how. once once we get to that game. But the fact is, Celtic are in the semi final. They're facing Aberdeen. It's all about thinking about now what the, the games that are coming, both domestically and in the Champions League. That 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 semi final will deal with itself when it comes around. Shy on Quinn predicting a Celtic Motherwell final, Ryan. Brendan Rogers has faced Motherwell in finals before. Hasn't he? Two in 2017 18, yeah. yeah. His first season, were, wasn't it? <laughs> probably the, the second season. Cup man. Second season, sorry, yeah. was it? Yeah, yeah it was the yeah, second so season. Right, yeah. Remember Cal McGregor and, and Cham yeah. scored yeah, yeah. Long Rangers and the Long Rangers. That sounds terrible. That <laughs> long range goals against Motherwell. <laughs> Goal. <laughs> goals from far out, Ryan. Distance. Yes. Scored goals from yes. distance. Is that what you meant? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> that is exactly what I meant, Tony. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, I, I seem to remember from the. That, that, it's all hypotheticals. We don't know what's going to happen between Motherwell and Rangers. Will Rangers still have an advantage due to the fact that they've played all their games, their home games thus far, apart from against Dundee at Hamden? It's it's an interesting dynamic and it'll be an interesting weekend of football. The one good thing is it'll probably be the Saturday that Celtic play because they're playing in Europe on the Tuesday. Yes. So that that uh, that definitely suits Celtic because the pitch will be in better nick as well because it hasn't played been played on uh, 24 hours previous. Yeah. We're almost at the 45 minute mark. I think I'll do the, the decent thing and let Ryan get on the road, guys. But Jackie Dillon, thank you for your company as well, Jackie Dillon. Always appreciate it. But Ryan, in any cup game, the bottom line has been in the hat for the next round. Celtic right defeated Falkirk 5 2. Falkirk were excellent for an hour. Celtic put on the afterburners by bringing on some quality players after Rogers made eight. A surprising eight changes to the starting lineup, but got the job done in the end. Run out convincing, convincing winners. 
I was going to say convincible winners there, Ryan, which is kind of convincing or comfortable. We're just making up words now, aren't we? Yeah, that's yeah. just what we do. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's kind of uh, uh, an indication that it's it's late. I'm getting late, but yeah, I thought Celtic ran out convincing winners in the end. Double from Ida, a double from Kuhn, and a wonderful strike from Bernardo. Sandra Scotland, thank you very much. Really appreciate that. And thank you, Dennis. Appreciate that. And Francis Lester as well. Thank you. He's saying there uh, as well that he's saying it's a nice, a great pod as well, as always. Thanks, guys. As I always say, we do appreciate our company. We try and read as many uh, comments as possible. Say thank you to AJ Outdoors91. He became a YouTube member. That's very kind. I'll let Ryan take it away on the benefits of that. Yep. I'll just bring it up there. If you want to support us just a little bit more on you on YouTube, you can join our members channel for just two pounds ninety nine a month. You will receive early video access, priority comments, and exclusive members chat function. Um, press that join button if you're on the desktop, and yeah, become a member, and you'll get videos early, get priority comments, and exclusive members chat function. So yeah, get involved, guys, if you if you haven't done so already. If you if you can do so, we really do appreciate it. And on the website, you've got my instant analysis. You've got two Brendan Rogers Q and A's. Is that right, Ryan? Already yes, I am. I'm still deciding. And mm-hmm. could have got your uh, well. We'll be waiting on your player ratings, which will either be tonight or tomorrow morning. I'm to probably going to hold them for tomorrow. I think. Yeah, now. that's fair enough. It. Okay, okay, but yeah, still plenty of stuff to read on the site, and uh, I think there's a. Uh, Adam, he does comments as we are up there on the site too. So have a read of all of that, guys. In the meantime, myself, Ryan and Hamish will be back tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock to discuss it all over again and make up more words as we go along, Ryan. Isn't that right? <laughs> yes, I think we will. But always look forward to it. Thanks, Tony. No worries. Have a great rest of your weekend, guys. Take care. Ryan, you're a Celtic supporter. Get yourself out of there and up the road. All right, bud. Take it easy. Eh? Cheers, guys. Thank you.